I think there is room in bike packing and cycle touring for more philosophy, more deep thought, more poetry. There are a lot of people on YouTube doing gear reviews, doing ride reports, and a lot of them do it much better than me. You know, people with more experience, more knowledge, more expertise, people taking on more challenging routes in more exotic locations. And that's great. You know, I will like, I'll subscribe, I will watch, and I will be inspired. And I'm sure that every one of the people making that content has those moments of just absolute awe at the landscapes they find themselves passing through, or just at the sense of their own scale against the backdrop of the world. I'm not saying I'm the only person who thinks like that, far, far from it. But it does seem like we heap an awful lot of attention on the more quantifiable achievements. Who can ride the fastest? Who can ride the furthest? Who can endure the most inclement weather, the harshest terrain, all whilst carrying the least amount of gear? And this makes sense. As humans, we all share to some extent that drive to explore and to challenge ourselves. It's what has taken us to every corner of every continent, to the bottom of the sea, to the moon, to Mars, and it's what will take us on beyond that when we get there, onto whatever the next horizon is that we decide needs to be crossed. So it makes sense that in bikepacking, we would concentrate on those riders who most fulfill that need, I suppose. But while it is a fundamental part of being human, it isn't the fundamental part. There are other traits that also make us what we are. One of which is our ability to be awed and to wonder at the things that we see as we move through the world. So while we have that voice up front, demanding that we just get our heads down, climb this mountain, dig deeper and squeeze a few extra miles from every hour in the saddle. That voice has a softly spoken cousin who rides along behind at a more leisurely pace, just looking around and who is always calling out, we have to stop, we have to stop, look at that. Look at the way the moss has filled that space between the tree roots and made a cradle for the new pine saplings to sprout in. Look at the way the wind is moving the wheat fields. Look at the way the sun is playing on the water. Now we have found chaos and order in perfect lockstep and we have to stop. We just have to sit and breathe it in, soak it up through our skin until we drown in it because it's too amazing to pass by. This softly spoken cousin has always been the more compelling ride leader, for me at least. Less concerned with how fast you get from A to B, more concerned with what you saw along the way, how it made you feel. I wondered Lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills. When all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils. Beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Continuous as stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way, they stretched in never-ending line along the margin of the bay. 10,000 saw I at a glance tossing their heads in sprightly dance. The waves beside them danced, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. A poet could not but be gay in such a jocund company. I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. For oft, as on my couch I lie, in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye, 
which is the gift of solitude. And then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. I reckon a few of you might know that one, at least the first couple of lines. If you were to say that was your favourite poem, I think that's sort of the literary equivalent of that scene in Alan Partridge where he says that his favourite Beatles album is the best of the Beatles. It isn't a cool answer. It isn't edgy or clever. But actually, it's a good answer because it's a cracker from start to finish. Now, here we have someone wandering, moving through the world without purpose or direction until they're stopped in their tracks by a scene of beauty and not a mighty river or a towering waterfall or distant mountains dressed in fog just daffodils a flower so plain and commonplace that it would often go completely unnoticed until on this day in this place in this frame of mind he's able to see daffodils in a different light and to see them as something so amazing that all he can do is stop and gaze and gaze and fill himself up with that scene to the point that far into the future when he's feeling a bit down, a bit miz or he's in the depths of some opium fueled psychotic episode I don't know what Wordsworth was into he can reach back to the memory of that scene and take some comfort from it this is what cycling does or what it can do if you want it to it can strip you back to a very simple state in which you are more open to seeing the wonder in small things it can fill you up with memories so vivid that you'll remember them for the rest of your life now i understand that i live in and take full advantage of a world it is almost entirely the product of that first voice that I mentioned. This bike that I'm riding, this phone that I'm talking to you through, the clothes I'm wearing, just the reality of me being able to be here now, thinking like this. These are all products of that human drive to explore, discover, invent, improve, and it's great, I'm a big fan of all that stuff. But it's also something which makes us reckless and it makes us single-minded and it makes us short-sighted, selfish and more and more we're waking up to the idea that it's something which can get us into trouble. You know, which has already started to get us into trouble and that maybe now would be a good time to think about slowing down a bit letting that softly spoken cousin catch up and paying a bit more attention to the things he's pointing out now i'm not talking about cycling anymore i'm generalizing to make a point you know if you want to have a crack at the tour divide see if you can bag yourself a record then i cannot fault your desire to do that i will wish a fine wind on your back and applaud you from start to finish but in the wider world, in life in general, in politics, economics, maybe, maybe it's time that we consider the fact that perhaps the summit isn't that much better than base camp. Maybe very few people will remember your attempt on the Tour Divide. But maybe if we learn, really learn, to see a field of daffodils as being as important, as amazing as a mountain or a rainbow or a pack of wolves, then maybe, just maybe, the people who do remember us will do so from a slightly better future. Happy riding all. Hi, I have a Kofi page. Kofi, Kofi, however you pronounce it, I've got one. And if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoy my videos in general, then the option is there for you to pop over, visit the link below and uh, chuck a few quid in my tip jar. All proceeds will go to supporting this channel, buying bits of kit, 
funding trips and who knows, maybe if there's enough tips in the jar, realizing my midlife crisis and seeing me quit this life of crime and head off in the forest to become a full-time spoon whittling, philosophizing bike wizard. Wouldn't that be nice? Um, at the time of filming this, it only accepts one-off donations. Possibly by the time you're watching this, I will have pulled my finger out enough to set up the shop and got some spoons up there, which you will be able to purchase. I'll be honest, if you're after a really fantastic artisan hand whittled spoon, then you should probably head over to Etsy and find someone else. But if you're in the market for a slightly wonky, slightly asymmetrical spoon with a lot of character and a bit of a backstory, then this is the place. They are all hand whittled by me from pieces of wood that I find whilst I'm out and about. You know, I'll give as much detail as I can about each one on the site and I'm sure they'll be incredibly sought after and hard to come by. Not because they're going to be very desirable, but because I'm very slow at whittling, so there just aren't that many of them. Um, I think if you look at it more as chipping in a bit of money to help support the channel and getting a spoon as a thank you, rather than buying a wooden spoon of that quality. I don't know. I'll put a link in the description. If you fancy helping to support this channel, that would be awesome. It's anything but compulsory. Um, I will continue to make these videos and to make these spoons, whether or not anyone is watching or cares. So um, yeah, options there. Thank you very much for watching this one all the way to the end. I appreciate it. Like, subscribe, comment, share, da -da -da -da, all that stuff. And I will see you on the next one, wherever that may be. Cheers.